Hence, July 24th, 2021 on Saturday, I was talking with a friend of mine this morning and um, an experience that I had uh, came back to my recollection and I was telling her about it. And after we got done talking, it occurred to me that this, this experience might encourage someone else out there that may be struggling with um, an act of obedience that the Lord's called you to do and it's something you really don't want to do. <laughs> and it doesn't make a whole lot of sense to you at the time. Um, and so I just want to encourage you with this video and I'll just tell my experience here. Um, this started back in 2009. My family and I live in a small community in the mountains in North Carolina. And we were attending at, at the time this little Baptist church here. And um, I had just been baptized in the Holy Spirit. I was reading God's word and I was taking everything in. I wanted to do everything Jesus commanded. Still do. Still want to. But um, one of the things that stood out to me and really resonated with me is that Jesus has called us believers to lay hands on the sick and heal them. And um, I just really took that to heart. I could just, that resonated so much. That's something I wanted to do. I wanted to be out there doing those things that Jesus asked us to do. And so I went to church one Sunday morning and I noticed one of our head deacons walked in and he had a cast on his hand. And so I went over to him and just boldly asked if I could pray for him to be healed, um, for healing, for his broken hand and he said yeah i'll take whatever prayer i can get and so i went to lay hands on him i was gonna do it right there and he yanked his hand back and he said you know like what are you doing i said um i want to lay hands on your on your broken hand and pray for jesus to heal you and i gave him the scripture right there jesus says you'll know the believers by this they'll be laying hands on the sick and healing and casting out demons and raising the dead and i wanted to do it all and the man looked at me kind of funny and he said i have a book i want you to read are you going to be at church tonight I said, yeah, I'll be back. And so he said, all right, I'll bring it to you. And he walked away. And I I just remember thinking, that was weird. I don't know if I'm going to want to read this book. I don't know what this book is, but that was a strange reaction. So that night, I came back to church, and he walked over while everybody was fellowshipping and visiting. And he brought this book over to me. And he said, before he handed it to me, he said, now I want you to promise me you'll read this. And I said, okay, I'll read it. And he handed me the book. And when I looked down... The title of the book was Coming Out of the Occult. And as soon as I read it, I knew what he was implying. It broke my heart. I was raised in a Baptist church. I know they don't believe in the gifts of the Holy Spirit. Some of them don't. Most maybe don't. I don't know. Mine didn't. And so it just it broke my heart to know that they didn't believe in the gifts of the Holy Spirit and that sort of thing. And, and that he was accusing me of being in some kind of occult mindset. I didn't know. But here's what, uh, another thing I didn't know. Um, there was a woman watching this exchange in our church. She watched him come over and hand me this book and asked me to promise to read it. And she saw the title of the book and she made some assumptions about me that were not true. I didn't know this at the time, but when I took the book and promised to read it, a couple of weeks went by and a friend of mine gave me a call and she said, have you heard the rumor that's going around about you? And I said, uh, no, I haven't heard anything. What's going on? And she said, I was at the grocery store and I heard two ladies on the aisle over from me talking about you. And so it kind of piqued my interest. And I started listening, see what they were saying. And she said, I heard them saying that you were into witchcraft and that you'd been dabbling in the occult. And I went, oh my gosh, are you kidding? I, oh my gosh, what? I mean, we're in a small town here and we're like that. It's just travels like wildfire and all i could think was oh no my poor husband he coaches the little league baseball team people are talking like this what is happening and so i just immediately i thanked my friend for defending me she said i went over there and set him straight and that wasn't true so i hung up with her and i just went outside i just started bawling i was just crying my eyes out i said lord what is happening why is this going on why are they saying this and I could feel the Lord chuckling in my spirit. And I know he doesn't take pleasure in our pain, but I just, I could feel this chuckle in my spirit. And I heard him say, they accused me of being with Beelzebub. So you're in great company. <laughs> oh my goodness. I just, I couldn't help but laugh. I mean, here I was just crying my eyes out to him. And, and that's what he said. And I knew right then to count this all joy. When you're persecuted for doing something that the Bible says we should be doing and the Holy Spirit's put it on your heart to do and you want to bring glory to the Lord and you get persecuted like this for it, then count it joy. 
you know, that was, I knew right then I was getting a reward in heaven for enduring, <laughs> enduring this rumor. Anyway, I asked the Lord right there. I said, Lord, just forgive her. She didn't know what she's doing. She didn't understand what was happening there. And so I asked the Lord to forgive her right there. And in my mind, I had forgiven her. I, I went about my, my life. We didn't go back to that church and we um, just, you know, went about our own lives and business. And you'd think in a small town, you'd run into people more often, but it was about five or so years before I saw that woman again. And I hadn't given her another thought. I hadn't given that experience another thought. And so when I saw her, I walked in this little store and she was over in the side aisle. She hadn't seen me walk in. And immediately I noticed she had a cast on her leg and was hobbling around with crutches and trying to push a cart. And I just didn't think twice about it. I turned right around and I walked out of that store. And I was heading back to my car and I was talking out loud to myself probably. And I was like, okay, I'm going to go sit down. I'm going to watch for her to leave. And then I'll go back in the store and do my stuff. And so I just asked the Lord right there, you know, if, I, if that was okay. <laughs> I was not going to encounter this woman. I did not want to see her or have this exchange. And I heard the Lord say in my spirit, I want you to go back and lay hands on that woman and pray for healing. Well, I'm not going to, I'm not going to lie to you. I, I, I argued with the Lord right there. I, I pretty much said, no, I don't want to do that. I do not want to do that. In fact, that's what got me in this mess to begin with was because I wanted to lay hands on someone and pray for healing. And it was considered witchcraft apparently. So I don't want to do that. And she didn't see me. I'm back in my car. Everything's fine. Just don't let me go back in there. And I heard him say again in my spirit, I want you to go back in, lay hands on that woman and pray for healing. And, you know, at this point, I really kind of understood this was not a question. This was a command. And he was not going to take no for an answer because I could, my heart was racing out of my chest. I knew I had to be obedient, even though I didn't want to. And it did not make sense to me. So I went back in the store and I watched. She was getting ready to check out. And I thought, you know what? Okay, I'll just wait till she checks out. And then I'll follow her out to her car and we'll do this out there. I don't want to make a scene in the grocery store or anything. So I kind of hid from her and I watched as she checked out. And I walked in behind her as she was leaving the store. And she was real pathetic. She was having trouble pushing her cart and walking with those crutches and nobody was helping her. So I came up behind her and I said, would you like help to your car? And before she could turn around, she said, oh yes, would you? I need the help. And then she turned and she saw it was me and her whole countenance just fell. I watched the blood drain out of that woman's face. She just went completely white. Her, her lips were even pale. It was just interesting to watch that happen in real time. And I knew that she was not expecting to see me when she turned around, obviously. So I asked her which car was hers and she pointed at the car. And as we're making our way over to the car, I am praying for all I am worth. I did not want to do this. I didn't trust myself. I wanted to defend myself. I wanted to say, Lord, well, I wanted to say to her, why? Why did you do this? Why did you say that about me? Why did you think that about me? And I, you know, all I could think to do is pray and ask the Lord, I don't trust myself, Lord. I don't want to say anything that's in my heart right now to say to this woman. I was upset, but I felt this pain and I just, I just wanted him to be the one to do the speaking through me. I said, I only want to say what you want me to say. I want to do this and be done. Um, there was, as soon as I saw her, I forgot to mention this. I just felt this like really bad pain in my chest. It wasn't anger. It was like a wound that was still open. And I didn't realize that wound was there because I hadn't seen her in all those years and I'd forgiven her. I thought it was over with. So as I'm walking to the car, I'm praying and I ask the Lord to speak through me. I don't want to, I don't want to talk out of my own mind right now. So I unload the stuff into her car and I turn around and she's kind of looking at me. Her eyes are big as saucers. And I said, so what happened to your leg? And she said, well, I was in a car accident and my leg got broken and I have to wear this cast for several weeks. And I said, well, would you mind if I, if I just laid hands on your leg and prayed for Jesus to heal you? And she was startled by this request, but she was like, uh, sure, I guess. And I was just, personally, I just wanted to be over with. I, I didn't want to do this. And I was just doing this out of obedience to the Lord, not out of any concern for this woman or this, you know, broken leg she had. So I bent down on one knee and just quickly, I just said, Lord Jesus, we just pray that you'd heal this woman's leg. 
In Jesus' name, <laughs> it was that short and sweet. But as I stood up, guys, it, this wave of love hit me like nothing I've ever experienced before. It was out of nowhere. I went from being like hurt and in pain with this wound and actually kind of angry to just saturated in love for this woman. I looked at her in the face and I deeply loved her. <laughs> and this was not coming from me. It was this profound love that I just suddenly felt for her as I stood back up. And I went in for a hug and I just hugged her. And while I hugged her, I heard the Lord speak to my spirit. And he said, when I asked you to lay hands and pray for healing, I wasn't talking about her. I was talking about you. <laughs> Guys, that blew my mind that God did that for me. That he was asking me to do something I didn't want to do because I didn't want to bless this woman. <laughs> and the blessing was for me. Even when he knew my heart, he kept pressing. And, and I had to obey him. I guess I didn't have to, but I had, but I had to. <laughs> it was just that simple. But I was the object of the blessing. Now, maybe she got healed. I don't know. She had the cast on. She couldn't have wiggled her foot or walked around without her crutches. Maybe if she'd wanted to, but, but I knew it was for me. I got back in my car and I just bawled. I just started crying and I'm thanking the Lord. Oh my goodness. I almost missed out on this. I almost... I almost said no. <laughs> I did say no. <laughs> but he wanted me to be healed. And it didn't make sense to me at the time. But as soon as the healing occurred, I knew that was all for me. So guys, I just want to encourage you. If the Lord is asking you to do something, and you don't want to do it, and it doesn't make sense to you, it might be that you're the one he wants to bless. So I would encourage you. Guys, just, we need to walk in obedience. God's ways are perfect. He loves us. And his plans for us supersede anything we could ever imagine. And I almost missed out on that blessing. I almost missed it. So I just hope this encourages somebody out there. I feel like God wants me to put this up. There's someone struggling with something they need to be obedient in right now. And, and I just want you to know, God has your best at heart. And he, uh, he loves you. And he wants you to, to receive the blessing from it as well. So keep looking up. Be blessed, guys. And know that Jesus loves you. Have a good evening.